Hey everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I want to give you guys a nice little tour of the figs. Um, the stuff that's on the patio, also the trees in ground. I want to go over as many individual trees as I can and give you guys a great view of them and what they look like at this current time of the year. Um, and then as, you know, as they fruit and as things progress in the season, I will highlight certain varieties that I think are, are worthy and worth uh, worth watching and worth talking about. And you'll get to see the nice little differences between now and what they look like when they're fruiting. Um, also, I wanna show you guys the Bravas that are forming right now that probably are somewhere around a month and a half away from being ripe. Um, and also the main crop that believe it or not on some of these trees here are forming. Um, this is going to be a pretty long tour, so hopefully you guys can stick around to the end. Before we get into that, I want to mention one more thing. Is that, uh, you know, I want to give you guys a nice little update of where we're at in the season right now. So today's May 7th. Um, it's very, very early this year. Everything is so far ahead that it's kind of incredible. Um, to think that we have trees that look like this at this point in the season is insane. Um, the greenhouse had a really nice head start, which are the trees you see over here. A lot of these got a head start. Very few of these in this row and very few of these in this row actually got some sort of head start. They were all brought out from underneath the sunroom, which acts as a bit of a root cellar. So it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. And then these trees have been naturally, for the most part, because they have been in this uh, root cellar you know, style of storage, they had a more natural, a very natural wake up process. I did bring some of them out here, if you guys remember. It was a nice experiment we did. We brought them out over here um, on April 1st. And it was a bit of an experiment to see how natural and how easy the wake up process would be. But to be honest with you, they wake up really well underneath the sunroom. And for the most part, all these trees, even though I brought some of them out here, uh, April 1st, all these guys here in this row and in this row woke up about halfway through April. Um, I'll note if the tree actually didn't wake up on time or didn't wake up around that date. Uh, the trees back in here that did get a head start in the greenhouse, those were woken up March 15th. So you can see that with the help of the heater, also taking off the tarp off the greenhouse, letting that heat come in. Uh, it got real hot in there and really kick-started a lot of these trees into not only growing quite a bit, but also putting out really small fruits already. So again, today is only uh, May 7th, and believe it or not, May 1st is our average last frost. So the fact that we have gotten this amount of growth at this point in the season is insane. Uh, this is a pretty good example of what I would think my trees would look like um, normally so this tree here see how the leaves are just now coming out it's just now budding this is probably what they look like at this time of the year maybe even a little bit further behind than this whereas if you look to the tree right next to it uh, this guy has put out you know three or four or five leaves per stem per new branch so uh, it just goes to show how far ahead we actually are I would say it's easily two weeks ahead of time normal you know schedule so we've had a really warm april today's going to be 80 degrees yesterday was about 70 so um, i'm loving it i'm really excited for this season um, i guess we could start over here and i want to show you guys a couple of these trees this one has a really weird form um, this is fiorone de ruvo rootstock and then on top of that i grafted two different paradisos this is paradiso from bode and then Paradiso from an Italian source, which we believe both of them actually to be the original Paradiso depicted in Galicio's drawings. Why is that important? Because we believe that some of the figs in his drawings are lost and it would be nice to find the originals and have, uh, you know, exactly what he illustrated and talked about in his manuscript. So we're hoping for that. We see a pretty nice Breva over here on this Paradiso, and what I'm planning to do, I think, next year, because I hate the form on this tree. This was not my tree originally. I had actually received this tree from a friend, and I hate this form down here where it splits off into two trunks. 
we could come in here with a saw and chop this whole thing in half and split this into two trees. Um, additionally, this branch here is out of control. It has a really weird shape. What I'm gonna do very soon is put an air layer on this branch here, and then this will form its own tree, and then this whole thing here will be brought back to a more normal height that then I can graft onto and have an actual respectable shape to my tree. <laughs> so, um, you know, for in the sake of form, we're gonna be air layering this, we're gonna be sawing it in half, and all this is gonna really be taken off. The air layer is gonna be taken off. The root pruning that's gonna happen, splitting them in two is gonna happen sometime in the fall when this tree officially goes dormant for the most part. Um, but the air layer is gonna be put on pretty soon. I'll bring you guys along for that. We've done numerous videos on air layering. It's, it's really, really simple. It's a really awesome process. Here's my Col de Don Blanc, and Col de Don Blanc's also in a 15 gallon. This tree, I think, is about four or five years old, at least. Um, you can see, here's the one, the new growth here. That's one years old. If I bring you guys down in here, so this is one years old, I think, and then this is two, and then this is three, and then this stem here is probably four or five years old, somewhere around that. So uh, this is kind of what to expect when your tree gets to this age. It really puts out a lot of fruit. It has a nice form, it grows really well. You can see Col de Don Blanc is actually putting out really small figlets right now. It's really great to see because you guys can see that. I know it's difficult for me to see on my screen here. You guys can see that. So that's really awesome because Col de Don Blanc is such an incredibly tasty fig. It's very late. And for me to be getting these figs 90 days from today, which is somewhere around August 1st, we're going to have Col de Don Blanc, which is insane. Absolutely insane. This here is my sweet joy. And uh, we also got this tree from a friend, and it, it grows actually really well. And then what I ended up doing was, I ended up using it as a Franken fig, and I grafted numerous varieties onto it. Um, this one here is Strawberry Verte, which has got really nice Breva. The main stem, however, got knocked off, and you can see that this now is the new main stem, which really stinks, but it is what it is. I've been trying to get, because Sweet Joy is so vigorous, you can see the four different limbs down here. Sweet Joy is off to the left, and I've been trying to limit, slow down the growth of Sweet Joy, because it is the mother plant, and get these other limbs over here to reach an equal height. And that way they'll have an equal vigor but it doesn't seem to really be happening this year. We'll have to come back next year and really chop this thing down even further. You can see that uh, Figo Sifeno Escuro, which actually dropped figs for me last year, is putting out a lot of figs again this year. You can see two figs on this node here. And then also two figs at this node here. Um, I think that's just what this variety does. It puts out a lot of fruit, but it may be a Smyrna, you never know. I think it's supposed to be common, it's reported to be common, but who knows. I don't think anyone's fruited this outside of a, a place with with the wasp, with the blastophaga. Um, this is my nice little Canadria tree that we used as rootstock last year. We grafted things like Harry's Crete, Cotillo Verdal, another Portuguese fig. Um, and then over here, which you can barely see it, is the white Madeira number one. And this did take, and it is starting to grow now, but it's been really slow. We've also grafted two new varieties on here in the form of bud grafts to hope that they take. Um, I really like Canadria as a fig. It's very vigorous. I love the flavor of it, but to be honest with you, Canadria um, just doesn't beat out other figs that I have that are very similar. I would classify White Triana. Dr. Gawadi is another one that I have. I've had many of them over the years. Here they are right here. This is Dr. Gawadi and White Triana, which is a bit slower to bud out this year. White Triana blows Canadria out of the water, and it's very similar to Canadria. Um, but you can also see what we're doing this year is we've been bringing and putting down different pots, different one gallon trees. These are rooted cuttings that I had done over over the winter time and we stuck them in the pot with the 
original tree. And that's all in an effort to have more varieties per pot um, to save space. This is Iraqi a Ficus Palmata hybrid. And then this here is Golden Rainbow. And if I bring you guys around the side here, you can see some of the in-ground trees that we just planted this year. There's 26 here. We actually still have three more to plant, two in the back and one over here. But these are all the in-ground trees, the very experimental varieties that I think could have potential here. Could have potential to fruit from dieback and put out a decent crop for me. Um, it's all really gonna be a big experiment. We have the trace of splice down here. It's a very early fig from, um, from Spain. And then here we have Neruchiola de Elba, which has put out, I think 10 Breva, but I took two of them off yesterday because they were, they were gonna fall off on their own anyway. Um, I'm really shocked that this thing's been able to grow as much as it has while also having 10 Breva on the tree. I mean, it's just, it's insane. So this variety I think puts out fruit real easy very precocious it's not the latest fig in the world either it seems about mid-season and because it puts out fruit so easily it's also a rain resistant variety I think this would be a pretty good candidate even if it were to die back all the way to the ground and um, so that's the goal is to find something that yeah if it doesn't survive here it doesn't survive our winters which the island of Elba which is where that tree is from in Italy Elba is a really warm place so the chances of this fig being naturalized and having good hardiness is pretty slim. Um, but at least it's gonna have good potential to fruit after dieback. We also have other varieties in here, like La Magdalene, this is another French variety. These are all rooted cuttings I had just stuck in the ground very recently. Violet Sapor, Thermalito, which is actually a very early um, Adriatic type, same thing with white Madeira number one, another Adriatic type. We also have uh, something called San Baggio, very rare Italian variety. We have um, St. Martin. St. Martin here is actually putting out like five Breba. This tree, believe it or not, is actually putting out main crop, but we've given this a head start in the greenhouse. So this one woke up March 15th for us. Um, same thing with Black Madeira KK, which is planted right next to it. And the Black Madeira KK, though, uh, is nowhere near, I think, as far along as the St. Martin. But uh, it is putting out really strong limbs up here. And I could, if I really wanted to, I could pinch this right now. And it would fruit for me sometime probably in mid uh, mid August, maybe even September 1st, which is May. Maybe what I would do, or what I should do, is come in here, because Black Madeira is so late, um, even after pinching, it takes a bit of time for the fruits to form. So I still need 90 days after that point, and that would put us probably sometime in, in September, I would imagine. Um, so it's really good to get these things earlier, especially if we got a lot of rain in your climate. We also planted things down in here like Daloso, which is really just now putting out um, leaves. Same thing with Blanche to do Cezanne. This one over here is a Fico Love. We have the Black Beauty 10. And we have also back here Smith, believe it or not, which is not a very hardy variety. But we're gonna see if it, if it can survive or if it does fruit really well from dieback. Here's Victoria from Pons, from Spain. Here we have also Golden Rainbow. That's why I wanted to bring you guys over here. And this is also Iraqi. Um, and then on the wall is all these production trees for next year. These really young, more on the weak side trees that will root themselves out completely in these five gallon pots. And I'll up pot them. Um, at the end of the at the this time next year actually into a 10 gallon or a 15 gallon and that's where they'll be um, and they should put out pretty good amount of fruits maybe even some this year uh, but much more next year and by that third year they're going to be in full production mode and uh, that's really the goal is to get as many of these varieties that i really care about and really like um, into larger containers 
for inevitable production because what's gonna happen is a lot of these varieties in the patio here are just not gonna make the cut. So in an effort to get rid of these, I have to replace them. I mean, I wanna replace them, right? I wanna have somewhere around, you know, 50 to 100 pots of fig trees. So um, I would like to limit that number though, in terms of varieties to maybe, you know, 10 to 15, I think that's reasonable. But of those 10 to 15 varieties, they're only gonna be about 50 to 100 pots of those 10 to 15 varieties. So I'd rather make many copies of the same fig than have many, many different varieties here. Uh, because what it comes down to in the end is that these varieties are pretty similar. Um, and you can kind of say, okay, well, this fig's really unique. Like, Suwadi is really unique. And that's something that, all right, well, if it's unique, then I could probably say, all right, let's keep it, you know? But in a lot of situations, I would say, uh, figs are just very similar to each other. And if they fit a, a certain flavor category, but one of them's earlier than the other one, or one of them's showing, you know, uh, certain characteristics that are more favorable, then we're gonna get rid of them um, and take the one that is just a better performer that fills a certain gap in a certain time you know everything's going to have its uh, its place and you can see here these are the tags that we're going to be using we sort of talked about this in a prior video of what you know what these tags uh, mean and you know we're going to be recording a ton of data on here to eventually make these decisions of what to get rid of a lot easier and make them have you know make a, a lot more sense um, so these trees here on the patio and this row and this row like we said we didn't get they didn't get a really big head start even though they woke up about you know april 15th these are the really early varieties that don't need a head start that i didn't need to put in the greenhouse the greenhouse should be i think in in my mind preserved for only a handful of early varieties but the rest of them should be for the late stuff because the late stuff needs it and the early varieties certainly do not and you can really see that well here is that these trees like this is my Moscatel Preto. Um, you can see, believe it or not, that it used to be huge and we, we um, killed it one winter basically. It got hit with a late frost, I think, or an early frost, not a late frost. One fall it got hit with an early frost and knocked the tree back all the way to the ground and I had no idea that was going to happen. But we lost a ton of growth. This was at one point my largest tree. <laughs> but now it's uh, it's coming back strongly. It came back last year all the way down here, had a re-sprout. And now it's putting out these really thick, strong limbs. And this is what I mean by these early varieties, that because they put out these thick and strong limbs, we can pinch these sometime around June 1st, and a lot of them is gonna ripen in August because of that. So we need to make sure that these guys are just putting out a lot of growth for us so that sometime in mid-May, June 1st, June 15th, we can come in here and pinch these and then get those fruits in August uh, at the very latest, September 1st. And it's the same thing over here, which is, which is also doing really well, is Dien Manel. This is a, a fig from, um, from Spain, from Ponza's collection, but I'm almost certain this is Grise de Saint Jean. I've tried the fruit. The leaves are identical. Um, I don't see much a big difference between them, and we're gonna compare them hopefully this year. I'll have some Grise de Saint Jean of my own to compare, but a very tasty, complex fig. Um, we also have over here, this is Hated de Argentile. I've been really excited to get Hated de Argentile to do some really wonderful things for me. It, it just gets off to a slow start. This is a fig that I would think has a pretty tropical flavor to it. It certainly has a weird berry flavor to it and it really does well in California. For those of you guys in California, this is an incredible fig, especially with the addition of the Blastophaga. Um, I certainly recommend this in a lot of climates. So finally now mine looks healthy. Look at the leaves. Um, it's putting out really nice, strong growth all over the tree. And we should be able to pinch this relatively soon and get ourselves a decent crop off this tree, which is awesome. Uh, people say it has a weak root system. People also say it has a, you know, a, uh, it's riddled with FMV because they originally came from UC Davis. But, I mean, look how healthy my tree looks. 
So, I don't know, it's over its weird little phase it went through and uh, from here on out I should be getting a really good crop of fruits. We also have another hated the Argentile tree here which we grafted and you can see the graft down here we did a nice little cleft graft onto raspberry el molino i think is what the rootstock was and now it's hated the argentile raspberry el molino turned out to be a, a smyrna and you can see just how beautiful the leaves look and it, it seems to do much better when you graft it it doesn't go through that weird stage of just having to struggle with a weak root system at a young a younger age because it's already got this really well developed root system underneath it so even on the grafted tree which is completely uh this is now the third year that i've had this tree and then now this is the second year i've had this one and they're pretty much on equal footing which is kind of insane and that just goes to show what grafting can do um it eliminated an entire year for me um, behind it in the same pot we've planted a lot of trees in the same pot to hopefully save space you can see some of these more newer trees like this was in a five gallon very recently and same thing with this tree here these both got a nice little head start um, this one is a uh, Sefeño Preto from Portugal and this one's Raven de Calci both two varieties I have high respect for you can see Raven de Calci actually has four Brava on it. It tastes a lot like Black Madeira. Um, you can see this leaf here sort of looks like Black Madeira, but I guarantee you it is not Black Madeira. Um, it's actually quite different, and believe it or not, this may even take the cake. It may be the better Black Madeira that exists. This one's from France, but in the same pot, we've got ourselves other one-gallon rooted trees. This is uh, Verde Passo which is, believe it or not, the same thing as Fico Rubato. And my Fico Rubato, we got a nice head start on this year. We've air layered it. I think this is also my third year with this tree. Originally grafted, it's in a 15 gallon size pot and behind it is something called Sandrosa. And Sandrosa we pinched. And because we pinched Sandrosa, all the way up here and it's been a while since we've pinched it it's now forming figs all up and down these branches even on the branches that I don't think we did pinch like this one here it's now sort of forming fruits but uh, in the same pot is the fico rubato which actually is forming figs now this is a very late this is a late variety you can see right in there is a small figlet and um, that's exciting. That's really exciting. That's almost as exciting as a uh, Col de Nom Blanc because this tree, this fruit is really high quality, but it fruits so late that it's almost not worth it. Um, and to have it now really early is surprising. Now I've purposely got myself Verde Passo to see if um, they are indeed the same, which I truly believe they are in indeed the same, but um, to also see if one of them is maybe well adapted, more well adapted to this climate. Maybe there's a small minor difference. Um, what I've noticed so far is that Verde Passo is way healthier than Fico Rubato. So we'll see, but it seems like this year, the vigor and the healthiness of my Fico Rubato is returning, but we will see what happens with this one. And it should fruit quite a bit very soon. We just took off this this tip here on this branch um, I think yesterday so we're gonna get a lot of fruit off of this one at a really early stage of the year same thing with the Sandrosa but the point is we're getting a lot of these trees as many of them as I can in the same pot to save a lot of space while also having many varieties to trial and to experiment with that's really a, a nice little part of what it is that I'm I'm doing is that there is a wide variety even though I want to get down to a certain number of them you know 10 or 15 varieties I really do like the fact there is such an incredible variety of fruits in my yard especially of figs man it's it's insane here we have another tree that got a nice greenhouse head start that was in a five gallon until very recently and this one is um, sanguinato and sanguinato we pinched 
it adjusted fairly well to the outdoor conditions and it's now putting out fruits. I would say in the next week or so we'll see figlets, which is really exciting because I've never tried this. This is a variety with high expectations for flavor. Um, it's a Greek variety and especially when pollinated, it looks incredible. Even unpollinated, it looks incredible. This is supposed to be a common fig, believe it or not. Um, I have a friend in California without the wasp. The wasp is not in every place in California. And he has fruited this in his location. So um, for me, I'm really expecting this one to be common. And if it is, I'm gonna be really, really excited. You can see this branch down here. We didn't pinch this one, but it should be forming fruits along it. And then I'll let this one continue to grow. And uh, yeah, this tree is gonna take off this year. It's gonna look much bigger than it does right now. But very excited to try the fruits. We have something here called Yuban, and then something over here, another Elba, another New Chile de Elba. And then one of these also is Cold Dom Grease VS from Herman, which I believe is LSU Scott's Black. And I'll show you guys my LSU Scott's Black tree because we're gonna compare Cold Dom Grease from Herman, there was a little bit of a mix up to LSU Scott's Black. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same thing. And my LSU Scott's Black is in a 15 gallon. It's huge, man. It's one of my more vigorous trees. It shares a pot with LSU Red. Supposed to be the tastiest variety of all the LSUs, but so far I haven't agreed. I haven't um, gotten too many fruits off of this that were really that tasty. But LSU Scott's Black is definitely a very tasty fig and it's got like seven Bravo on here. I think I counted, which is really good to see. Um, so we'll also compare though, because I want to compare Cold Adam Grease to LSU Scott's Black. The both of these are actually fruiting main crop right now. I think LSU Scott's Black already has formed figlets that are very visible somewhere on this tree. This is a leaf here that just came off. And because it was burnt by the sun, it didn't adjust. This particular leaf did not adjust. It got burnt and now it's off. So you gotta be really careful with these trees and adjusting them to the sun. You can see this tree took a nice little beating here. This is GM175 and I think I should pinch this one. I should come in here and induce some fruits on this because this guy really has gotten a nice head start to the season. Um, the tree down in here that's with it is a rootstock that I used and it, the variety on top never took. So we can take this out of here if we want or graft onto this or I'm gonna put I think is more likely more one gallon trees in here to give uh, you know those trees a home and let this GM 175 not take over the entire pot even though it probably already has. Um, but that's the goal is we actually, look here, we took off the tip here. We may have done that yesterday. And hopefully very soon this guy will put out figlets because it really did get a huge head start. Um, this tree also got a huge head start. We've showed you guys this tree. This is one of the first ones we took out of the greenhouse. A nice Franken fig of four different varieties here. Grafted onto a variety called Yellow Lebanese, which is very similar to Canadria. And you can see them all down in here. It's a nice little view of the different branches. We have one graft that went out this way and also up. And then here's another variety here and here's another variety there and another variety here. And this tree is actually fruiting for me. You can see these little figlets. Um, almost all the varieties that I grafted on here are now forming small figlets. Yep. So what are the varieties on this tree? We have, I think, four ponds varieties. Borda Barraquare, Blavetta Campos, De La Gloria, and Mare de Dew. These are all really tasty varieties from Ponza's collection that are a bit late. So putting them in the greenhouse certainly, I think, is helping out the situation here. This tree's doing really well. What is this? This is Bibera Branca. Oh, I love Bibera Branca. This is a good fig. This has a unique flavor, unlike any other fig I've tried. 
This is really similar to a honey fig, but it's got that light fruity berry flavor to it. It's unlike any other honey fig. It's unlike any other berry fig. It's like pretty much putting two figs together into one. And that's what Bavaria Branca is. It's definitely a unique flavor. Um, and I think inevitably I may end up keeping this if I can't find a fig that performs better. Um, that also puts out the same flavor or a similar flavor. Um, and I think we may have pinched this. We really should come in here and, and look at these trees a bit closer. I need to go over all of them again, I think, because we may want to pinch this now. I know this one is a bit late, so uh, definitely something we should think about. Also, this variety does really well in California with the wasp uh, in drier climates. This is a really tasty fig, so get your hands on it for sure. I recommend it. And then in the same pot is um, Borgia Soak Reese, Borgia Soak Reese, and Violet Sapor. And these are all believed to be the same thing. Some people believe they're not the same thing. I don't believe they're the same thing. But we have them all in the same pot here from different sources, different places to confirm whether or not they are indeed the same. And we'll see, they're all very really good figs. So it's not a big loss if they all end up being the same thing. Um, here we have uh, Brandon Street Unknown from Ben B in Seattle. I think Ben actually got rid of his tree. So I don't know, I don't know what that means, but personally I like it. I think it does really well here in this climate. It's very early. You can see it's just now waking up though for the most part. This one's a bit behind and we can't really hold it to the same standards as the rest of these trees unfortunately this year. Uh, or we have to consider it in the sense that it is like two or three weeks behind the other ones. And then this tree here is Yellow Nietzsche's, and Yellow Nietzsche's was a big disappointment last year in terms of flavor. Beautiful fig though, uh, but this one's supposed to have a tropical flavor as well, so we'll see. It grew really well last year. We grafted it, and it put out a lot of fruits. It seems to be very precocious, an easy fruiter, definitely an early ripening variety. So we just need to fix the flavor on it, and you know what? It was really early to give this fig a, a judgment anyway. So we're going to judge it again this year. Hopefully it has matured a bit and we'll get a really good idea on the flavor. Here we have a Calderwood Unknown, which is said to be the same thing as LSU Tiger. And I have a feeling that my Mega Celeste, which I want to show you guys in the greenhouse, is the same thing as this. I can't be too sure, but... We did get rid of all of our LSU tiger trees. We had one on the ground. We had planned to put one in the ground as well. And then we also had two of them in a pot. You can see them over here. Mm. So what we had done, similar to what we were going to do with the Fiorone de Ruvo, how we're gonna cut that in half, is that we did that last year. We cut the LSU tiger here, and we cut that in half with the other half of the tree right here. So LSU Tiger got cut in half. It was originally in a 30 gallon size pot. Now they're both in 15s. Same thing with the raspberry lattes right next to each other. We cut them in half. Actually, this raspberry latte was like my tallest tree. And we cut back all that growth off the top to uh, graft it on a lower point. And we basically just created more rootstock for ourselves. LSU Tiger I think is a good fig but my trees had issues last year, particularly these two, because we had them originally in like 50 gallon size pots, and then we downsized them to 30, and then this year we're downsizing them to 15, so the fruit is kind of taking a hit, and it's not really a great representation. I think it also just needs a lot of water compared to other varieties. I, I think it just has big, big leaves, and my tree just didn't perform well. Neither did the raspberry lattes, and I think it just has something to do with how what how they were treated the last year you know the conditions of last year and it really wasn't a good idea i think to fairly judge them but uh, in the end i think i'm happy with my decisions and at least with lsu tiger we have a replacement here and it is now fruiting which is insane uh, but it looks like this limb here got pinched by accident maybe mother nature did that and you can see it also has a brava and it's also growing well. You know, it's a vigorous, vigorous tree. So we'll see if this one matures at all, the fruit quality matures. Because even on that mature tree over here I showed you guys, 
Because we had such a weird year with it, I don't think the fruit was really even a great representation. Even if it was a mature tree, it was in a 30 gallon size pot that is definitely four or five years old. I don't think it really was a, a true representation, but it's okay. Uh, we have a backup over there and maybe I'll come back one day to raspberry latte and give it a shot again. Um, but for the most part, they make great rootstock. They're both very vigorous. You can see we've grafted a whole host of different varieties on here. I mean, I'm getting at least on every single tree, like seven varieties, which is really nice, really awesome. Some of them have already taken here. Like this one is Siblawi. Probably butchered that name. Um, maybe even this guy back in here looks like he's about to take. Um, this guy here looks like he's taken Goudain. This guy up here. This is a Black Madeira Unknown up in here. And then also I think one of these varieties back in here, I don't know. But the majority of them are taking or very close to taking. So it's exciting, right? We're getting good results from the grafts we put on a couple weeks ago because we've had all this heat. You can see here's another one that's pretty close to taking. And uh, it's just really exciting. You know, all our hard work on grafting and getting these varieties and spending lots of time to research them and uh, come up with better answers is all, you know, paying off. So, but you know, it's getting pretty hot out here, guys. I want to come back at you guys with part two of this tour. This one's getting really long. So if you're interested in this, you got it, you got this far. We're going to see you guys tomorrow for the same video. Just part two of the tour. Um, I got to go inside and actually change the battery out. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow uh, for part two of the fig tour. Hope to see you guys there. Take care, everyone.